And you hear a lot of students when they, when they come up to CISOs or even myself, you know, they go, I want to get into cyber. Right. And you say, what part? And they don't really know. Is criminal justice another part of cyber? Is, do you feel like that's the Is it a similar path? Should, do you need technical experience, meaning? Uh, I don't think you need technical experience, especially not in the context of what we do. I think okay. that the criminal justice or the criminologists they bring their background in criminology, sort of understanding you know, human behavior, the, the research methods, um, you know, how, how to um, understand the progression of a criminal event. That's what we bring, and then we sort of um, uh, try, try to think about um, or, or, or understand all of those concepts, all those criminological constructs and concepts uh, in the context of cybersecurity and cyberspace. Um, the computer scientists should bring the technical background, the criminologists bring the, the, the social science background, the, the understanding of human behavior, the research methods, and together um, I, think, I think it makes sense um, you know, that to sort of you know, push the envelope in that context. So, you know, to tell you that uh, I believe that uh, students should have some background in criminal justice, I, 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 would, I would say that, um, in my opinion, um, the students uh, should have experience um, collecting data, um, understanding how humans think, understanding how criminals behave in you know, offline and online environment. Uh, but that should be in addition to the technical skills that we try to teach them in, in um, uh, you know, the, the more technical department, like the computer science department right. and engineering schools. It's, 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 very, um, it's very interesting because you brought up something of how do criminals behave in an offline and online mm -hmm. way. Yeah. And it feels like, you know, when you, when you view an average person's behavior online and, you know, and you go through Twitter or, you know, Facebook or, you know, Link, let's leave LinkedIn to the side, but if you go through Twitter and Facebook, people tend to hide behind a virtual identity mm -hmm. that's completely different from what they really are. You know, what they are online is very right. different from what they are offline. Offline, mm -hmm. they can look very normal. I mean, the synagogue shooter offline to everyone around him right. looked like a normal 19-year-old kid. Mm -hmm. But online, he was a hate-filled, just felt marginalized, uh, very propaganda, you know, very propaganda. Do you feel like that behavior is becoming easier to identify? Or do you feel like that behavior is still very difficult to quantify? So what do you mean behavior? What, so you mean criminal behavior? I mean, And yeah. based on signs you observe what? in the offline and online environment? Right, because offline, this kid looked completely normal. Right. There's no way in the world anyone would thought this 19-year-old right. kid, and I, don't, I won't say names of people who do mass shootings, right. I don't give them free press, but um, um, this kid walked into, you know, and we call him a kid, he's an adult. So this man, this 19-year-old man, walked into a place of worship and mm -hmm. shot people up. But in, right. in normal life, every single day, this man was walking around, seemed normal, did all things normal people do. Right. But online, he had a completely different identity. Do you feel like... In programs like yours, when you talk about evidence-based cybersecurity and kind of understanding the criminal, because I, I think that's what a lot of people today don't quite piece this stuff together. And maybe I'm way ahead of myself here, or maybe I'm just talking nonsense. And you can you can no, no, no. It clarify may, it may, that. Listen, it makes perfect sense, and we know there's a lot of psychological research that essentially indicates that we have uh, those. Uh, offline and online personas, right? And, you know, it's really understand split someone. Split personality. It's, uh, well, you know, it, it's not really split. It's the same personality. It's just a different manifestation of the personality in offline and online environment, right? Okay. So in order for you to really understand a person, uh, you need to take into consideration, you know, both the online and offline manifestation of, of his or her behavior. Now, um, you know, to, to your question and, and whether it's easier to detect and, and identify those behaviors uh, because of the online manifestations, you know, to tell you the truth, I don't think so. Uh, because most of the individuals that, um, you know, want to behave in a rude or, or a criminal way, they don't do that online under their true identity. Right, they so hide. So it's very difficult. Exactly, they hide. So it's very difficult to sort of put one and one together before an event happens right, uh, and, and predict that this guy or that guy will engage in, in either offline or online crimes. Um, you know, I think that after the case, it's, it's, it's really interesting to sort of try and, you know, com um, generate this complete picture of the individual personality and see, you know, try to think how that sort of pushed the individual to engage in a specific behavior or not. 
Uh, but it's very difficult to predict the event right before it happens um, based on what we have online. Well, it's always easier to judge something after it, ha after it happened. You see that in mainstream, right? right? They bring these panels of experts and they go, was there a way to recognize? Right. And, you know, and you have all these different opinions and I feel like, you know, um, um, that's just garbage. It's, right. it's, just, it's just pure, you know, airtime of just wasting time watching mm -hmm. something. Really, people have a different manifestation and I feel like research that what you guys are doing and based on our conversations has a really interesting point of view because you can really build a, a case with research that can be presented to a judge to get a warrant to be able to tap someone's phone or right. be able to uh, you know go through an encryption that he's using right. for messages to, to really kind of be like he's normal he's going to the supermarket he's going to work he's getting in a car he's going to church he's doing all these different mm -hmm. things uh, but really, in the hearts of hearts, that you know, and, and you know, during lunchtime, he's not really eating his cheese sandwich. Right. He's you know, scoping out a, a place. He's you know, and, but, but this is essentially what the forensic guys will do. So right. you know, we we are re researchers, right? I mean, so um, we're less interested in in you know cases like the one you just uh, uh, mentioned. Right. No, but but the forensics guys, right? I mean, after they. Uh, capture someone who were engaged in a specific behavior in order for them to really understand the individual, you know, in fair intent, as we, we discussed earlier, you need to create a, a, a picture, right? A, a complete picture of the individual and the personality. And so that's why, yeah, I mean, you're going to talk to witnesses that will talk about, you know, how the individual behave, right? I mean, whether it's a, he's, a, he's a good person or not, but at the end of the day, you will also go to his uh, the smartphone, computer, and try to get us some evidence for uh, the online manifestation of right. his personality. Uh, so, so it's really interesting. Uh, this is after the, after the fact, right. but it's not really research, right? I mean, this, right. this, this evidence is essentially used for... For, uh, for prosecution. For prosecution, exactly. The Proving evidence intense. that we produce is evidence that is supposed to be used by CISOs, is supposed to be used by policymakers um, in their decision with respect to which tool to implement, which policies to implement when we're trying to protect our um, infrastructure. Our infrastructure.